Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Friday and it's time for a trip around the cryptoverse into the altcoin scene. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and let's just hop right in. Let's start off here with Bitcoin dominance. So this has been something that a lot of people have been looking at over the past week due to the fact the inevitable was going to come. We were going to see Bitcoin regain some serious strength, put in some big green candles, and people were going to take the flight to safety from the alts back to BTC. So that is what we've seen this week. But now over the last day or so, since Bitcoin has started to hold at around the 54, 55k region, we're seeing a bit of momentum move back into the altcoins. So it hasn't been a absolute giga pump for Bitcoin dominance here, but it is looking rather strong. And think about the events coming up. We have Taproot for BTC probably coming in November. And if we get an ETF, this again could see Bitcoin dominance go up even further. But for me, I will be sat in my altcoins and patiently waiting for that liquidity that is generated from the Bitcoin uptick to filter down into the altcoin markets. And that's where we're going to see some big movements, twos, threes, five, ten Xs across the board for many altcoins. So looking forward to what Q4 brings, but I'm not too worried about losing a bit of dominance to BTC. So you might be down in your Bitcoin pairing, but up in USD. So how are we looking on the fear and greed index here? Well, we're looking rather greedy right now with a rating of 74. Yesterday, we were in extreme greed. If we just roll down here and actually have a look at the chart and look over the last three months, we are starting to peak back up to regions here in the 70s and 80s, which we typically do get a bit of a rejection from. We can sustain these periods for quite some time though, as you can see. And if we go back historically, we can sit up in these high levels, especially during major movements in the market for quite some time. So it's not kind of as soon as we hit 80, 85, drop all your bags, but maybe think about making some dry powder available from some altcoin gains at that point. So what's been happening in the land of layer ones? Well, on my feed, I've seen a lot of people talking about how ETH is dead, totally unusable, which to be fair is a fair comment. Trading ERC20s is pretty much a no-go and even using OpenSea uh, on ETH native NFTs is really quite stressful to do because you're going to spend a ton on gas. However, the whole ETH is dead kind of narrative usually signifies a good time to buy Ethereum. And we've started to see Ethereum follow Bitcoin now at around 3,400 bucks. But in general, across this layer one landscape, we're seeing a lot of movement because Ethereum is too expensive. So anyone actually entering the market now needs to use the likes of a BSC, a Solana, a Phantom, a Terra, an Avalanche or a Polygon. And that's as, and that's as wide as my net will go. I'm not looking at anything below Polygon here. I don't have the capacity to dive through all of these things and I do think these L1s here have actually now got enough network effect that they will sustain beyond this cycle whereas the jury is still out on many of these down here. So what have we seen? Well Polygon has been pumping as of the last like 24 hours. Avalanche Rush did not get off to a good start. There was essentially kind of a pre-hype. Everyone was expecting massive gains from the rush but the rush didn't really come. The APYs were super, super low. And so it was kind of a deflation of the market once this actually hit because there was no rush that people were after. So AVAX has started to slide a little bit, but I'm sure it's time will come again once it has a bit of a cool off and those who are thinking of exiting their positions actually go ahead and exit, but it will come again. Then we have Terra being put in a strong performance over the last seven days, even setting some new all-time highs, currently around that $45, $46 region. And then we have the standout performer over the last 24 hours, Phantom, which actually broke two bucks for the first time in its history. So congrats to everyone involved with Phantom here. And I think this has been a beneficiary of the AVAX decline here with some of that liquidity finding its way into the Phantom ecosystem. We'll discuss more on this in a moment. Then we have Solana, which has essentially been trading sideways for a little while here, but I do expect this one to pick back up. And BSC, apart from the pancake swap NFTs, doesn't have a lot going for it right now. If we look at the market cap to TVLs, the lower, the better. It means that the ratio is more favorable. Your market cap and total value locked are fairly close. And so the lower the number, the potential more undervalued that ecosystem is. And this is what we've seen. There's been a repricing of Phantom. It's been shooting up the ranks here. It's TVL to market cap ratio 0.63. And then the likes of Solana 4.6 maybe shows it's slightly overvalued for the amount of total value locked. 
which hasn't really moved. So this has been a good metric to just keep a tab on and one that I've been coming in and checking on here on DeFi Llama, another awesome resource. First altcoin up here is Shib Shiba Inu. And you will notice this one is down heavily. You can see a retracement here from its highs just yesterday, now roughly down around 30 odd percent from those highs, especially on the BTC and ETH comparatives there, taking a bit of hiding. Rank 20th was as high as 12th, would you believe? This one is essentially a leveraged long position on Dogecoin. However, why did this pump and why is this volume just come in out of nowhere? Well, you have your man, Mr. Elon Musk to thank for that one. He posted this picture of his Shiba Inu pup called Floki, and that was on October the 4th, and that coincides exactly when this started to go off like a rocket. So not much fundamental analysis to be done here. This was purely a momentum play off the back of Elon's tweet, and that's what sent the price up. And of course, this won't be able to really sustain without any fundamental narrative backing it up other than a picture from one of the world's richest men. So incredible stuff to see. He still has a bit of clout in the industry for these meme tokens. We're also seeing quite a lot of influencers, and I say influencers, they're like Shiba influencers, talking about the potential of Robinhood adding Shiba Inu to its exchange to be traded. So that was kind of the rumor mill going round here and this helped further flame the fire, if you will, of that pump. And also I've seen this one circulating about Amazon actually accepting Shiba as a means of payment. I do not believe this in any way, shape or form. I think this is an absolute joke, but you will see this on the rumor mill on YouTube if you just type in Shiba Inu. So this actually shows you quite a few things. If you go and actually have a look at this, I know most people probably think this is a bit of a ridiculous area of the market to look at, but it interests me to see why people get involved with this. I've had texts about this. What do I think of Shiba Inu? Are you buying it? Do you hold it? The answer is no to those things. However, it's intriguing to see how people discover these different cryptocurrencies, especially these meme ones. And what I can say is that people were being recommended them on social media. And if you check out Google Trends and you type in crypto, Shiba Inu is one of the best search results here. Obviously the price does help as when things are pumping, people are interested in it, but they must have their marketing on point for Shiba to be on so many eyeballs and on the radar of so many retail investors. So definitely the meme token market is not one to be totally overlooked, but these things will pump really quickly. But as we're seeing, they can dump just as quick as well. So obviously huge risk and huge rewards on the table here. So here we have the Phantom coin and this is ranked 35th. And for L1, maybe this is a real outside bet to outperform many of the others. It is up 27% over the last 24 hours. Never go and buy a big pump like this. However, you've had many opportunities over the last few weeks to get involved with this one with quite a lot of dips at the low $1 region. So Phantom, super cool ecosystem, very user-friendly, a great community behind them as well. Market cap, $5.8 billion right now. If we just look over the last seven days, you can see some dips down here to the low 130s. And then it went off like a rocket over the last 36 six hours, I would suggest, putting in all-time highs at $2.43. Is this something to do with the woo phenomenon? So this is something I picked up previously on Polygon. When Polygon Matic was brought into the woo ecosystem and woo started to supply deep, deep liquidity for that token, after that happened, we saw Polygon absolutely moon. And similar things are starting to happen with Phantom. Maybe this is all coincidence, but I do believe that this liquidity boost does help big investors actually get involved with large sums of capital. So this was around the start of September that this occurred with this new integration. Liquidity for Phantom on DeFi and CeFi solutions, including Polygon and BSC networks. And from an interview yesterday that Phantom Alerts did with Woo Network's Ben York, he actually talked about getting Phantom onto more centralized exchanges and tier ones. So I don't think this ship has yet sailed fully. I think we will see more sustained movements in the market cap of Phantom, but also the TVL. And here on DeFi Llama, you can see the TVL is up like an absolute hockey stick. So is all that liquidity, meaning that people can now ape hard into the Phantom ecosystem, I think that is what is happening personally. So as you know, if you've been following along with the channel, my play in this ecosystem has been Spooky Swap, and I've been staking my boo for XBU. The TVL of this one has grown tremendously over the last month, and it's only been around five weeks since that original video, and it feels like it's been about a year. 
just goes to show how fast everything moves in the crypto space. TVL has gone from 25 mil up to 75 million, but the token price is similar to when I covered it on that previous video. So I think Boo is in for a repricing very soon. TVL of this particular pool now is $73 million. You stake your Boo, you're gonna get X Boo and around 23% rewards. So you're gonna gain more Boo tokens, but then you can deploy it into one of these various farms as well, that X Boo, and then start to earn not only more X Boo rewards, but also some rewards in these tokens. So for example here, you can earn 15% in Phantom and additional 23% in Boo. So plenty of earnings potential on this one. And of course they have their own bridge enabled in here, which has been super easy for people to get back and forth from other chains. Spooky Swap had a bit of a downturn in its TVL, but as you can see, it's starting to grow once again. 406 mil in total value locked now, and it is the third biggest crypto by market cap on the Phantom ecosystem, market cap's $143 million. I think this one's got a ways to keep growing. As that number one DEX of this ecosystem. I wouldn't be surprised to see this at $100 if the market keeps up the way it is right now. We've also got big mover here, Popsicle Finance Ice, with that dev, I think his name's Daniel Siestia or something like that. This guy's been making serious moves. He's got Popsicle Finance under his belt and he's also got Abracadabra money. That is magic internet money, the stable coin and the spell token, which has been on a ridiculous tear as of late. So this guy who runs this project has a very good reputation in the industry right now and hence it's up 177% over the last week. We're also seeing huge moves here for the likes of the number two decks, Spirit Swap and Paint Swap down here, 314% gains and more projects coming online with Phantom very soon. Go and check out FTM Alerts on YouTube. They did another project interview yesterday with a new one coming to this ecosystem in the DeFi sector. Now we have Matic, which has been an absolute laggard here. This one posted all time highs all the way back on the 18th of May, $2.62, and it's 46% away from its previous all-time high. So when is it gonna hit that again? Well, it is a matter of time, as this ecosystem has really been mooning in the metrics. It's now overtaken the total number of active users. Then it's big brother Ethereum, and the numbers just keep on going up and up and up. If ETH is unusable due to gas, people are flocking to Polygon Matic in a big way. And so once this network effect starts to reach critical mass, you'll start to see exponential price rises. One thing I've really learned here is the fact you can just discard the actual names of all these tokens. Focus on network effects. As soon as the number of unique users on a protocol starts to really hit a bit of a groundswell, you're going to get TVL popping up all over the shop. You're going to see people utilizing different dApps, essentially entering these ecosystems and not really having to leave. And with that kind of network effect in play, the price will follow suit. So for me, Polygon Matic is one of the most undervalued L1s here, and it is really taking the strain of the Ethereum main chain. It's also seeing tremendous growth here in the NFT sector. Over on OpenSea here, number of monthly NFT sales here, so 351,000 in August, 838,000 in September, and of course we're just starting October here, but already 143,000 sold thus far. This looks like it's going to be bigger once again. We're going to break potentially a million sales here on the Polygon chain for OpenSea, and if you look at the number of active traders as well, everything is going up. This kind of reminds you of the early days of OpenSea on ETH when numbers were going parabolic. So looking at these charts, the numbers do not lie. A lot of users are going into the Polygon ecosystem and the price will have to follow in line with that. And this isn't really coming from QuickSwap either. So QuickSwap's actual average volumes are down and its liquidity is down as well. So this does tell you that it's like the NFTs and gaming narratives that are being massive here for the Polygon network. They've actually announced this. There's a bit of a rave tomorrow. Polygon excited to be part of the Decentraland Amnesia Ibiza Super Club launch in the metaverse tomorrow with Benny Benassi and Paul Van Dyke actually performing. So this shows you that these guys are going into the metaverse. They want to make Polygon known for its capabilities in this NFT gaming metaverse sector. And if we go over here as well on DAP radar, you can see the fourth most utilized DAP here is by Arc8 on the Polygon network. They have over 200,000 users 
over the last 24 hours. This was up to 300,000 just the other day. So you're seeing tons of people playing games on Polygon, and this again will influence price. Now we covered this one just two days ago. Prosper has started to really move here up from the low twos now to the low threes, up to $3.24 at a peak here. Market cap now around $14 million. So nice to see that one starting to move rather quickly. Here we have this Anchor versus Aave. Anchor's TVL 5 billion, Aave's is 25 billion. Of course, Anchor, a much younger protocol. So Aave has 5x the TVL, but Anchor has 2.5x more monthly active users, and it looks like it's on an uptrend. So here we have the usage in green for Anchor, and as you can see in March, April, May, June, it was trying to catch up with Aave. July surpassed it for the first time, August, September, in a big way, really does put Aave to shame in terms of those user numbers. Looks like we'll be surpassing this 30K number of active users during this month of October. Someone says here, if this isn't bullish news for Anchor, I don't know what it is. And then we have a comment down here. What would be really bullish for Anchor though, would be better tokenomics. So this is something I wanna dive into over the coming week is the Anchor protocol like how the tokenomics work, will they be improved? Because if they can capture more value, I'm sure it could be incredibly valuable. And what does this mean for the overall Terra Luna ecosystem? So more to come on this one, but a very exciting statistic here for Anchor Protocol. Then a new function has been announced here on Ramp DeFi. The Zap function has now been added. I've personally used this over the last few days. Zap function is activated for both single asset markets and LP asset markets. So this is how it works. You select a token to swap out of. So say you've taken out a loan here on your ramp, for example, and you've now got some RUSD. You can swap your RUSD on the Zap function for some ramp. So that is the coin I want to deposit to. So take an RUSD into ramp, click Zap and approve the transactions. So the token then, the ramp token, will automatically be bought with your original RUSD and deployed in the same transaction to your stake over here on the single asset market. So I took out a bit of a RUSD loan, bought some more ramp and automatically staked them back in here in that one simple transaction and my deposited amount just popped up. So this is a nice UI improvement from ramp. They are listening to us when we always mention things need to be a bit sexier, easier to use while well, they are listening and they have done this. So go and check out the Zap functionality here. And I've got mine on Binance Smart Chain, BEP20 here in this pool for ramp. So take your ramp, stake it, take out a loan against it, watch that liquidation price, of course, then use that RUSD amount and borrow some more ramp and stake it via Zap. So that is what I've been doing and it's been working out well so far. And as long as the prices keep moving up, we're getting further and further away from my liquidation price. So all good stuff here from Ramp. So there we have it, our altcoin roundup for this week. Some big movements in the market. Many of these L1s still fighting for supremacy here and repricing themselves. We're not really seeing too much from decentralized applications making big moves now. It seems to be an L1 game. So the big caps are moving. We know what comes next mid caps and low caps. So hopefully Bitcoin can continue playing ball, which it seems to be doing as we're seeing more and more good news stories coming out. Banks are buying, big institutions are buying, everyone is super bullish right now. So I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please slap a like on the video, drop me a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.